Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel Rishti IS English. My name is Pragya and in today's interesting episode of Polity Primer, we are going to discuss a topic which is important but which is often overlooked. The title of our today's discussion is Prison Reforms in India. So, prisons are not only a center for serving punishment but they are also center for rehabilitation. Center for rehabilitation. and reintegration so in today's episode we are going to dive deep into the need of having prison reforms in india so firstly in this discussion we will study about the history of prison administration in india then we are also going to see the problem of prisons in india we are also going to analyze the need for having new prison act and lastly we will see a practice question for your prelims examination and a practice question for your mains examination. So, if I talk about the background of our today's topic, recently while attending the annual police uh, summit in the January 2023, our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, Sri Narendra Modi batted for having prison reforms in India, batted for repealing all the obsolete laws in India. So, this brings us to the moot question of our today's discussion that what is the act we are following for having prison administration in India and why are we talking about having prison reforms in India. So, the modern prison in India originated with the minute by T.B. Macaulay in the year 1835. A committee namely Prison Discipline Committee was appointed which submitted its report on 1838. The committee recommended increased rigorness of treatment while rejecting all humanitarian needs and reforms for the prisoners. So, basically they followed the retributive theory of punishment. Retributive theory of punishment so instead of following a reformative theory they followed the retributive theory of punishment they said that yes all the local criminal laws will become ineffective if we have any humanitarian grounds if we allow any of the reform in the criminal nature and this was the case because most of the time uh, most of the prisoners at that point of time were indians and that is why they followed such inhumane approach. Moving forward, following the recommendations of the Macaulay Committee between 1836 to 1838, central prisons were constructed from 1846. The contemporary prison administration in India is thus a legacy of the British rule. So, as you all know, most of the laws we follow are the laws from colonial times. So, now you will ask me ma'am what is the act governing prison administration in India? So, it is the Prisons Act of 1894 on the basis of which the prison jail management and administration operates in India. So, basically we are following this archaic colonial law for having any kind of prison administration or jail management in India and that is why time and again we are talking about having prison reforms in India. Now, let us understand the structure of the criminal justice system in India. So, the Indian criminal justice system is composed of government agencies that enforce the law, adjudicate crimes and correct criminal behavior. It has four sub subsystems. Firstly, the legislature which is responsible for enacting the laws. Then there are enforcement agencies such as police. Then there is adjudication by the courts and then there are correction centers namely the uh, prisons. Okay, so this is the basis of criminal justice system in India and the criminal justice system in India is enforced through three criminal laws, three criminal laws, namely the CRPC, IPC and the Indian Evidence Act. CRPC is now known as the Bharatiya Nagrik Suraksha Sanheta. IPC is now known as the Bharatiya Nyay Sanhita and Indian Evidence Act is now known as the Bharatiya Saksha Sanhita. So, the three new criminal uh, acts have replaced CRPC, IPC and uh, Indian Evidence Act, but they are the major source of administration of 
criminal justice system in India. Moving forward, let us analyze some of the issues related to prisons in India. So, the first and the foremost issue that we are facing related to the prisons in India is the overcrowding of our Indian prisons. So, congestion in jails, particularly among under trial prisoners. So, who are these under trial prisoners? They are the prisoners who have not been granted bail and are facing trial. So, they are in prison, languishing in prison, okay. And has been a source of concern. Obviously, if prison overcrowding has to be brought down, the under trial population has to be reduced drastically. In fact, the Supreme Court has declared right of having speedy justice, right of having speedy justice. as a fundamental right under article 21 of the Indian constitution. But what are we seeing? We are seeing overcrowding of our jail due to the presence of uh, under trial population in the prisoners. In fact, as per the NCRB data or the National Crime Records Bureau data, 117% of our prisons are already occupied. So, you can imagine the overcrowding in the prisons and this is happening due to the huge pendency in cases and delay in trials. So, the next issue is the health and hygiene in the prisoner, prisons. So, in Indian prisons, the health and hygiene is often very compromised. They do not have access to basic health facilities, basic kitchen hygiene and basic washroom hygiene. So, they are languishing in jail with this improper facilities and this is also a big concern in the prisons in India. Moving forward, delay in trials. So, as I have mentioned that yes, overcrowding is due to under trial prisoners and there is a definite delay in the trial. There is a huge pendency in the Indian court. A lot of cases are pending for many years and this leads to a disruption in the prison administration system. However, the Supreme Court in the Hussain Ara Khatun versus Home Secretary 1979, also known as the legal aid case, has declared the right to receive speedy justice as a fundamental right in India under Article 21 of our Indian Constitution. But how many of the prisoners are receiving legal aid, are receiving this uh, right to speedy justice? Hardly any because of the pendency of the cases. And we have analyzed the issue related to the free legal aid in India. So, let me know in the comment box below, what do you think? Is right to speedy justice easily accessible in India or not? Moving forward, then there is another means of custodial torture or custodial death. See, as per a landmark Supreme Court judgment in the case of DK Basu, uh, the Supreme Court has said that the police cannot employ third degree torture. But this is a sad reality that to extract important evidences, to extract confessions, police do employ third degree torture even after it has been declared as unconstitutional. But yes, custodial torture and custodial deaths are a reality as of now as well. Okay, so custodial deaths have increased. Custodial deaths have increased. as per the NCRB data. Okay, and this is a huge concern as of now and this is why we are talking about having prison reforms in India. Moving forward, another issue is related to the women prisoners in the prisons. So, between 2014 and 2019, Indian prisons witnessed an increase in the population of female prisoners by 11.7% and by 2019, women accounted for 4.2% of the total prison population. So, ideally you should have exclusive prisons for women, but this is not happening in India. They are often lodged with their male counterparts and they are often unable to uh, report issues such as sexual violence, you know, um, brutal be behavior by the jail authorities and they are unable to avail basic sanitization uh, things also like such as sanitary napkins etc they are not able to access that and they often are languishing in jails along with their male counterparts so there is a 
sharing of prisons we do not have enough ex exclusive prisons for women and this is why a reform is needed in this regard also moving forward let us analyze why is there a need for prison reforms in india so we have analyzed the issues related to the prisons in india now what exactly is the need for having these prison reforms in india so there are several lacunae in the old pre independence act that is the prisons act of 1894 and there was conspicuous omission of the correctional focus in the existing act so as i have mentioned before also that they follow the retributive theory of punishment they do not follow the reformative theory of punishment they do not believe in any reforms because they were the britishers and they said that no criminal laws could not be administered effectively if we we'll follow, follow a reformative approach they believed that all criminals have criminal intents and this was the reason because most of the prisoners at that point of time were indians okay so the prison act 1894 mainly focuses on keeping the criminals in custody and enforcement of discipline and order in the prisons there is no provision for reform and rehabilitation of prisoners in this act so i have mentioned that yes prisons are not only a center for serving your jail term serving your punishment but it is an important center also for rehabilitation purposes for reintegration purposes that most of the criminals after serving their jail term should be able to reintegrate to the with the society so this all is not mentioned in this colonial law of the uh, british era that is the prisons act of 1894 it basically follows a retributive theory of punishment moving forward so there is this newly enacted model prisons act of 2023 keeping in mind all of the lacuna in the old british era prison administrative uh, act and the prison administrative system in india so the silent pro provisions of this act include provision for punishment for prisoners and jail staff for use of prohibited items such as mobile phones in jail so you might have heard in the news also that most of the crimes are committed by having access to mobile phone in jail so although the mastermind will be lodged in the jail but he will be connected through his uh, to his team members to his uh, you know terrorist company by help of the connivance of jail officials he'll obtain a mobile phone and he'll continue spreading crime so this uh, had to be checked and this is checked in the newly enacted model prison act of 2023 so establishment and management of high security jails open jail open and semi open jails this is something very new for india okay then there are provisions for protecting society from the criminal activities of hardened criminals and habitual offenders so it is very important to deal with this hardened criminals because they have no scope of reforms left in them and then there are some habitual offenders also who keep on committing the same kind of crime again and again and again and again so there is a need to protect the society from these um, species of criminals as well and that is why it is talking about having high security jails okay moving forward to some of the more salient provisions under the act so providing legal aid to the prisoners parole for low and premature release to incentivize good conduct so as we were discussing that yes there is a tendency of cases the right to free legal aid is not received by most of the prisoners in india so it also increases this lawyers to prisoners ratio okay and it also increases the uh, chances of having reforms in the prisoners by incentivizing good conduct of prisoners then there is security assessment and segregation of prisoners individual sentence planning okay then there is prison administration board also prison administration it also recognizes a special facilities for women and transgender prisoners transgender okay so it also recognizes that yes basic facilities have to be available to the women prisoners we need to construct exclusive women prisons and it also recognizes the need of transgender prisoners 
there are provisions for use of technology in prison administration with a view to bring transparency in prison administration so as to stop the use of mobile phones etc provision for video conferencing with court so as to ensure that the dependency of cases uh, is checked and the dependency of cases decreases okay then there is scientific and technological interventions in the prisons etc so basically they are trying to have high tech jails in india and they are trying to uh, resolve all of the issues in the prisons which we have studied through this act okay and prisons in india is a state subject prison is a state subject okay under list 7 of our indian constitution so by enacting this model prison act of 2023 it is also asking the state governments to enact and to have these reforms within their specific jurisdiction so these were the salient features of this model prison act of 2023 with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion we have seen the history of behind the prison administration in india the law governing prison administration in india and this newly enacted act that is the model prison act of 2023 and its salient features in fact there is an advocates amendment bill also of 2023 which talks about having repealing all of the obsolete laws in india okay so this advocates amendment bill kindly let me know whether it has become an act or not i'm not sure about this kindly let me know in the comment box below so it talks about repealing all of the obsolete laws in india so finally we are enacting the prison reforms in india and definitely we are trying to resolve, resolve most of the issues in the prisons in india the one thing that we need to resolve on the urgent basis is the overcrowding of prisons in india now let us discuss a practice question for your prelims examination so the question is consider the following statements your statement number 1 is the prisons act 90, 1894 is the law governing prison administration in india your statement number 2 is the prisons act 1894 has been repealed by the model prisons act of 2023 which of the following statements given above is are correct your options are option a is one only option b is two only option c is both one and two and option d is neither one nor two kindly drop your answer in the comment box below now let us discuss a practice question for your mains examination so the question is critically analyze the need for prison reforms in india so firstly you will talk about the history of prison act 1894 as i have discussed then you will talk about the issues such as overcrowding issues related to health and hygiene issue related to pendency of cases women prisoners etc and you will write short short points on them and then you will uh, write that yes we need prison reforms in india because of the overcrowding of our prisons because of the various issues that are prevalent in our indian prisons and you will write about the model prison act of 2023 so i'll conclude holistically that yes we need prison reforms in india so as to uh, increase the reformative behavior of the prisoners so as to incentivize their good conduct because this is also necessary if we want to have less the number of people committing crime in the society i hope this session was insightful for you if you have any feedback regarding this session kindly drop it in the comment box below if you like the today's discussion and found it to be helpful kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such updates thank you